Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin. We've looked at a lot of compact projectors here on the channel over the years. They are very convenient because they're lightweight and portable, but they're not very bright. So you really have to get the lights down significantly to get a usable image out of them. This new one from Anchor's Nebula brand is relatively lightweight and portable, but is much, much brighter. And that's thanks to its laser that it has inside for its lamp. And this one is called the Nebula Cosmos Laser 4K. There's also a 1080p version available. And we're going to take a closer look at this device in just a second, but I do want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this projector is all about. Now, the price point on this projector is rather steep. The 1080p version sells for about $1,700. The 4K version sells for $2,200. I ended up getting a really good deal on this 4K version because I did their early bird Kickstarter that they do whenever they roll out a new projection product. And I paid $999 for the 1080p version and they made a mistake and a 4K one showed up. So at some point they might ask for this back and I'll swap it out for the 1080p version. But what you're gonna see today is the 4K version of the projector. There is not much of a difference in overall specifications between this and the 1080p version beyond the resolution. So a lot of the experience that you'll see with the 4K here today will be identical on the 1080p minus the fact that one can do 4K and the other one is just at the lower 1080p resolution. They rate the brightness on this one as 2400 ISO lumens and I will largely agree with that assessment. It is quite bright. It is as bright as my old projector that this is replacing from about 10 or 15 years ago, which is rated at a similar lumen level. So this is going to be significantly brighter than what you may have seen with other projectors like it out there. Now these projectors are designed to be taken places, which is why they design a handle right into the top of it. It is a bit bulky though. It weighs 10.7 pounds or 4.85 kilograms. It is much larger than some of the other Nebula projectors that we have looked at recently. This is their Mars 2, and you can see there is a pretty big size difference between these two, although this one is almost five times as bright as this little one here, which is why it is larger. This is really not designed, I think, as a home theater device. It certainly has the image quality for a home theater use, but it really is something that isn't well suited for being mounted somewhere given that it is so tall vertically. And a lot of these home theater projectors are more horizontally designed so you can mount them in the ceiling and keep them out of sight. So this is something you're gonna bring out and then put away when you're done with it. There is no lens cover here on the front. So you're gonna wanna keep this clean and maybe find a carrying bag for it or something like that. Uh, just to prevent its safety sensor from getting tripped by dirt on the glass. And I'll show you that safety sensor in a little bit. Unlike the other Nebula projectors, this one does not have a battery on board. So you do need to plug it in. When it's at full brightness, it's going to be drawing about 150 watts of power. So you will uh, definitely need a pretty big battery to plug it into. Uh, if you do plan to go without grid power. Now this is not a short throw projector, so you're going to have to move it pretty far back from your projection screen to get the maximum image. They recommend a max image of 150 inches, which requires you to move the projector back about 14 feet from the screen, or 4.2 meters. When we hook it up in a few minutes, the example images you'll see are at about half of that distance. So we're gonna have about a 75 inch screen at approximately seven feet from the wall that we're projecting on. Now, like other Nebula projectors, this does integrate an Android TV, but you have to install it first before you get up and running. So what you do is you take off the back panel here, you will find this little Nebula dongle in the box and you just have to plug it in and insert it. If you forget to insert it, you will be given a reminder to do so, which tells you to please insert your dongle and explore all entertainments. The translations are as good as always there. This dongle, by the way, they sell separately, and I tested it a little while back, but never got around to reviewing it. It's a very low-end Android TV experience. 
It's not a great Android TV, but I think for a projector, it's fine. This does support Netflix. Many projectors don't. And you will get 4K HDR on Netflix and other apps that support it on this device. On the 1080p one, of course, you don't get 4K, but you do get the HDR. So it is a very full functioning Android TV complete with Chromecasting. And that was nice to see on here. And I also like that there's an upgrade path down the road. So at some point, if this one goes obsolete, you can swap it out and stick in another one. It is running Android 10. I have no idea if they will go to Android 11. So just bear that in mind, but it does have that fully functional Android TV in there. Now for a premium projector, I was kind of disappointed with its lack of connectivity. So all you've got here is an HDMI input. That is it. Uh, you can use it as a Bluetooth speaker if you want, but uh, beyond that, the only video input is through this HDMI connector or perhaps through the uh, micro HDMI that that dongle uses inside of the panel here. Your power goes in here, so the power supply is integrated, so that's one less thing to carry around. There's no power brick. The USB port here is for the Android TV. This is basically an on-the-go port, so you can plug in memory cards and other things that have media on them for playback. Uh, one thing that does not work with the dongle, and I found this out when I tested it, uh, is that it doesn't support Ethernet. So it's really just there for maybe a keyboard or a mouse or plugging in some USB memory stick. You also have an auxiliary audio output here if you don't want to use its internal speakers. Now it does come with a remote control. This works mostly though with the built-in Android TV on board, but it's your basic kind of cheap feeling Android TV remote. It does support voice control for the Google Assistant and whatnot. And of course, you've got their uh, sold real estate here at the bottom for popular apps. There's also a control panel on the top here that will illuminate uh, when you touch it. And this is how you get into the projector settings. To manage the projector settings remotely, there is an app you can download for your phone, but you don't get all of the projector controls on the remote because again, this is tied in with the Android TV. Now this has a great set of speakers on board. It has two five watt tweeters and two 10 watt drivers. They're located on each side of the unit. So everybody sitting around this thing outside is going to hear it quite well. It's got a good range of sound. It carries, it's got some decent bass to it as well. So you're likely not going to have to hook up any additional speakers for an outdoor movie night. And because it's so bright and the image is so clear, as you'll see in a minute, I think it does really well for that activity. And I think that's largely what they designed this for. It's not surround sound though. So if you are looking for Atmos audio or something, this is not your product. And again, I think for home theater usage, there are better projectors that would integrate with a home theater receiver. But for outdoor movie nights or setting up something in a gymnasium or something, this will, I think, do a great job of that. There is a fan on board, of course, because it does have to keep that laser cool. And for its brightness, it doesn't generate all that much heat and the fan is not very loud. So the laser does consume more power than an LED, but far less than a traditional lamp might at the same brightness. So you're gonna get a great image without a lot of energy consumption and not a lot of heat generated. And they rate the laser here for 25,000 hours, which is significantly more than what you'll get out of a traditional lamp. Let's take a look now and see what this looks like under a couple of different lighting conditions. So we're gonna begin with a bright room with the lights on projecting against just a white painted wall. Uh, this again is about seven feet away from that wall. So we've got about a 75 inch image here. This is a rather large wall. And as you can see, we're getting a lot of detail out of the video here, even though we have all the lights on. And that's one of the advantages of having a projector this bright. You do lose some contrast because of the nature of things here, but we've got a very visible image. And if you were to walk into an office with this thing to do a PowerPoint presentation or something, you're gonna be able to see it without having to mess around with the blinds or the lights but things get a lot better when you turn the lights off. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so here we have the lights on as we saw a minute or two ago, and here goes the light switch. Look at that, and that's where the contrast comes into play. Now, I set up my camera to get as close to as what I saw with my eyes as I could. So this is pretty much what I was seeing with my eyes 
uh, as I was experimenting with the projector here. I was really impressed with its contrast ratio. It just looks spectacular. And I think you'll get a very similar image out of the 1080p version, of course, with just a little less resolution. The video we're playing here is a 4K 60 frames per second video. And I think if I were to show this to people, they'd have a hard time differentiating this projected image to what you might get from a television. So it just looks great. And of course, the quality of the screen that you're projecting onto will also have an impact here. But the image quality, the brightness, all of it uh, made me very happy with my purchase. Now, this is the first laser projector that I have tested here on the channel. I would imagine that other laser projectors out there will deliver very similar quality images. This is using DLP technology similar to those other projectors, but those other projectors tend to be a little bit larger and less portable than this one. And I was really looking for something similar to the other Nebula projectors that had the brightness and this one definitely does. Now there is a 24p mode on the projector, so it will play back movies at their native frame rate. On the Android dongle that's built in though, you do have to set that frame rate manually every time you want to use it. I did try to use Plex and have Plex auto adjust the frame rate, but unfortunately the dongle just doesn't support that. You can though plug in an Apple TV or an Nvidia Shield or something that does support that frame rate switching, but it is able to play back just fine once you get that mode set. Now for gaming, you can plug in a game console into the HDMI port here in the back. By the way, whenever you connect something over HDMI, it automatically switches from the Android TV to the HDMI port, and then it'll switch back to the Android TV when you unplug that device, and you can also use the remote to do that. Games look great on this. This is my Nintendo Switch running Fast RMX, which is a game that runs at a nice 60 frames per second on the Switch. And as you can see, it is looking great. Uh, the maximum frame rate is 60 frames per second on the projector, so most game consoles should look nice on it. The only thing that I encountered with this is a good amount of input lag. You will feel it. There is a game mode. In fact, there are two game modes and neither one of them did a very good job of reducing the overall input lag. So the best I could get out of it was about 116 milliseconds. Now my methodology is to shoot a controller and the screen with my iPad that can shoot video at 240 frames per second, and then we're able to count the frames out to get a rough idea as to what the lag is. Now on a good gaming monitor, uh, we'll see about 60 milliseconds here, it's just about double, so it's not going to be the best gaming experience, especially if you are looking for precision. But the games sure do look nice on this projector. I hooked up my Mr. FPGA console a little bit earlier. That's also how I did the input lag testing because uh, the Mr. allows you to directly connect NES controllers to it for the least amount of lag. And as you can see here, it's looking great, but what you don't see is the input lag that I was experiencing playing Mario 3 here. So if you are looking for precise movements, a projector is rarely a good way to go for gaming because most of these projectors have input lag issues. This one though is on the higher end of what I have tested. The lowest input lag projector that I've looked at is another Nebula called the Capsule 2. It's about the size of a soda can. It is much, much dimmer than this one is, but it does have the least amount of lag that I have tested. And again, this one is a bit higher than some of the others out there. Now it also has an auto keystoning feature. So if you are projecting at an angle, it will make the image straight as you'll see here in a second. So it'll do it vertically like this. There it goes. And it will also do it uh, horizontally too. So here you can see that image de-distorting as we move things around. So you can generally get a pretty square image here. And every time you move the projector, it's going to adjust. It also has an autofocus on board. You can do these things manually, but I found the automatic modes have been working really well in my testing. Now on the bottom here, there is a tripod mount. So you can put it on a camera tripod to get it exactly at the height that you want. Just make sure that the tripod you're looking at can handle the weight because remember this thing weighs almost 11 pounds and not all camera tripods out there these days are rated for that kind of weight. 
Uh, they do make a special stand for this as well, but any tripod that can support 11 pounds or more will do. Now there is a safety feature built into this, so if somebody walks in front of the projector, it will dim the image automatically until that person walks away. And I would imagine that would include pets and other things that might have their eyes damaged by uh, a projector this bright. So it was nice to see that safety feature built in. So overall, what I needed in a projector was something portable that had decent speakers and video playback capabilities integrated. I do a lot of presentations locally for different volunteer organizations that I'm involved with. And I'm also the guy that people go to when they need to borrow a projector for their organization or something else that's going on. And you never know what kind of lighting you're walking into. And what I like about this big projector versus some of these little ones that I've been playing with over the last couple of years is that it's bright enough to work even in a pretty decently lit room. And that's often what I'm walking into. So to know I have something that's just gonna work regardless of environment is really useful for me. And the speakers are great. The Android TV that's integrated, while not great for a home theater system, is actually really good for this particular device. And that is why I am happy with my purchase. That said, at the 1080p level, there are a ton of projectors out there now that are just as bright that will cost less than this one. They're not as portable. They don't have a decent Android TV built in. They don't have very good speakers, but they will project an image in a bright room. But for me, I really wanted that portability and ease of use because I'm not the only one that's going to use this. And I think that is why this one is driving the higher premium is all the integration of features. But at 1080p, you can certainly get something just as bright, if not brighter, for less money. On the home theater side, I think this is going to be a tougher sell because for me, I only needed a 1080p projector. I ended up with the 4K one because they shipped me the wrong one by accident. Uh, and in many cases, you can find a home theater short throw 4K projector powered by a laser that's just as bright uh, that will come in at around this price point. And it's just not practical as a statically placed home theater projector. But if you want the best of the best in portability, I think this one is probably the one to get right now uh, in its 4K variation. And I was very, very pleased with how great the images look coming out of it at all resolutions. So definitely shop around a bit and figure out what your use case is. If your use case matches mine, I think the 1080p version of this projector is going to do quite well for you. And although it might cost more than a projector with a standard bulb, you don't have the consumable cost of a bulb that has to be replaced every couple hundred hours. This one, they claim, will go for 25,000 hours, which is a good long time. So that is gonna do it for this look at the Nebula Cosmos Laser 4K. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht, Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel, Brian Parker and Frank Goldman, Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.